Hi, I am so happy you're here. In this video, we are going to talk about the six lesser known causes of fearful avoidant attachment style. Because maybe you don't really recognize yourself in any of the attachment styles. A little bit here and there. But it can be that you looked up how the fearful avoidant attachment style develops. And you saw that it has to do with severe abuse. And you were like, well, that's not me. I've had a pretty fairly happy childhood with parents who were always there for me. So that can't be me. But... It doesn't have to be severe abuse. You can actually feel like you've had a really happy childhood and, you know, love your parents dearly and still have a, have a good connection with them and still have this attachment style. As a child, it is so, 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 so important that your parents feel safe. And when looking for comfort as a child, ideally you had a parent that could soothe you at any moment and regulate their own emotions. In fearful avoidant attachment, this isn't the case. The parent or caregiver is either frightening or frightened and therefore isn't able to soothe you and regulate their own emotions, which makes it really hard for you to look for that soothing. And it's also very scary and confusing for the child when that happens. So the parent or caregiver was unable to soothe you. And the person you had to seek comfort from was actually the one that was causing fear in you and distress, even when they were very, very well-meaning. So let's dive into the six lesser known causes, very specific things your parents might have done, um, even as really good people that could cause the fearful avoidant attachment style. So the first is hypercritical parents. And when I say that, I can totally imagine you thinking, well, I didn't have hypercritical parents. They, they wanted to help me and they gave me feedback so that I could succeed in the world. And that's what I believed for a long, long time. And I really think that my parents, in my case, it was my dad mostly, really saw it that way. He really thought that he was just helping me and preparing me for the world. Um, looking back, it actually was criticism. Anytime you do anything, express yourself and you get feedback on that, which pretty much means what you're doing is not right and you should adapt, you should do it differently if you want to be accepted, you can see that as criticism. You are not okay the way you are. And what that does is that you're really scared to express yourself, to be yourself, and also to let out your big emotions and um, your weak moments. It could be that your parents were cri critical about that too. And you won't let yourself be weak, you won't let yourself be vulnerable, vulnerable, and you will definitely not see comfort then from your parents because they could actually criticize you, which feels like rejection, which feels like abandonment for the small child that really needs their parents to survive, essentially. And not just in a physical sense, but also with your emotional needs. A child needs that. It needs that. It's not a... Um, a nice extra or a plus or a bonus you need that emotional support from your parents and if you don't get that it can feel like your parents are abandoning you and that can feel so scary um, which causes a lot of fear the second one is an unpredictably angry parent and unpredictable is the main key here i think all parents get angry. <laughs> I don't think there are parents in the world that are never, ever, ever, ever angry. Um, but the thing is, when it's unpredictable, that's when it becomes really scary and confusing for the child. So when you know you're pushing button buttons as a child, you know your parent might get angry. And that's okay. You can handle that because you saw it coming. You, you knew you were doing something they, they didn't like and you were pushing it. So that doesn't necessarily cause this attachment style. What is more frightening for the child is when a parent can become angry out of nowhere 
and even lash out at you because they might have had a really rough day or they cannot regulate their own emotions so they kind of blow off steam on you and that is really really confusing for the child um, because you want predictability that's how you feel safe as a child you just want everything to be predictable because there's so much happening in your little baby toddler brain you cannot you cannot anticipate or see that your parent being angry might actually not have anything to do with you because you need control as a child you need control over your world and that's why children all children have the tendency to think that everything is their fault because then they can adapt and then they can feel safe it is so unsafe for a child to see that their parent is actually just unsafe because then they cannot influence that and they will always be unsafe which triggers that abandonment again and it really is almost like a fear of death in a way because you are so dependent on parents so then imagine that you are in a household where either one or both parents just get unpredictably angry and as a child you're like wait what did i do and what did i do what can i do to prevent this the next time and especially when stuff like this happens when you see comfort and when you see connection and sometimes your parent is like <sighs> get out of here and lashes out at you because they can't handle themselves at that moment um, that can cause you to become really confused about how to seek connection and how to seek comfort and to really relax in that because you never know when the next burst is gonna come i remember when um 10 years ago i was in the depth of my fearful avoidant attachment um trauma really and uh i I was walking outside with my now husband and we had had a relationship for three years and I said I'm still waiting for you to just explode out of nowhere and get really angry with me and he laughed and he said oh I'm well I never felt like doing that so I don't think that will come and now it's 12 and a half, half years later and he still hasn't done that but I, that was just so wired into me that that would happen at some point that I was just waiting for it to happen which makes you tense all the time and makes it really hard to relax in the relationship and have those really tender beautiful connected moments that's what you're really afraid of when you're fearful when you're a fearful avoidant um, so the third one, I, I already kind of said uh, for the last one, but the third one is that parents that blow off steam on you, um, they can't self-regulate. So that means that when they feel uh, overwhelmed, when they feel tense, when they feel a lot of things that they cannot regulate for themselves, that they cannot deal with for themselves, they might blow off steam on you. You don't even really have to do anything it's it's just one thing that causes a reaction in them with all kinds of bent up feelings and they just blow it off on you um, and that can actually feel like a relief for them which also makes it kind of hard to talk to your parents about this because they will not have the feeling that they uh, got angry with you so often because for them it didn't even really feel like anger it didn't really even feel like blowing off steam for them they just felt very un felt a lot of unease then you did something and then they feel relief in the reaction they had on you and um, that can be a really frightening reaction for you but for them it's it actually might have felt kind of good like they might have felt guilty if, if they really were yelling uh, and they saw your re reaction but it will never feel as frightening for them as it had felt for you but what this does when when parents do this is that you have the feeling that you have to walk on eggshells around them and can you imagine then that when that happens with the first person or the first people you love which is your parents that you just take that dynamic into your relationship right now and you still walk on eggshells even if that's not really necessary and it can even lead to you feeling like something's missing because in a way 
when it's so wired into us that a parent will explode, a parent will blow off steam, or a parent will, you know, lash out at you, that's almost what becomes predictable. Like the unpredictability becomes predictable. So when you then have a healthy, steady, committed relationship with somebody that just doesn't do that and that's safe, that feels safe and secure, it can actually feel really uneasy. Like you, you just wait for something to happen. And when your fear brain cannot pinpoint the threat, but knows that it can come at any time, it just it starts feeling um, really anxious and starts looking for things to focus on just to prevent something bad from happening, which can mean that you start to have doubts about the relationship, start to really um, put a magnifying glass over every single flaw your partner has, even when it's not that big of a flaw, just to have something to focus on that might go wrong, that might cause him to leave or that might cause the relationship to deteriorate or, or not go right. That's just because your fear brain is so trained in perceiving and seeing threats that when it's not there, it's still doing it. The fourth one is shaming emotions, uh, but being very emotional themselves. So when you um, had a parent that got in unpredictably angry um, or just pissed off or um, uh, unhappy, it, it could be that they are very emotional, cannot handle their own emotions, but shamed your emotions because they cannot handle emotions as a whole. <laughs> so this is really confusing as a kid that you see your parent having all these big emotions and, and whenever you have the, um, the, the urge or have any emotion such as being sad or being angry or being um, even elated happy, it could be that your parent snapped at you, said something, criticized you, shamed you for it. like. Um, what do you have to cry about? Be a big boy. Pull, get your big, pull your big girl panties up. I don't know the American expressions. I'm Dutch, if you didn't know. Um, but there are a lot of ways we can shame emotions in, child, in children. And uh, that makes you feel like you are bad for having these emotions, even though your parent is having those emotions, which makes those emotions seem even more scary and frightening also. So when you are not allowed to react whatever, in whatever way you want to react, um, it kind of shuts you down. And you can take that dynamic into your relationship now too. And that really does lead also to fearful avoidant attachment style. It's, it's a part of it. So um, you just don't allow your feelings. You cannot feel your feelings. You're scared of your feelings. And what happens when you shove, shove all your emotions and feelings down? The only emotion you feel or the only feeling you have is fear. Because that's, that's like... Um, an instinct we needed for thousands of years to survive. So that is the one thing you can't really suppress. So that is the one thing you feel. And it can really cause you to, um, to be scared of any emotion and feeling that comes up and, um, and think this is not right, this is not right, this is not right. All right, the fifth is emotional manipulation, using anger, shame, and guilt to get you to do things. And this, I mean, manipulation sounds, sounds really harsh, and um, it can really be that your parents do not even know consciously that they are using this, and they don't really use this as a way to manipulate you, but they do it because that's what they've been taught and that's what they've got in their in their childhood so they think that's normal and that's just the way to go so what that means is that whenever you don't want to do something that your parent or caregiver wants you to do they get angry that is a form of manipulation you have to listen to me or else that's even a threat <laughs> but it's also manipulation it it just coaxes you into having to do what they Want. And, you know, sometimes that's necessary just to keep you safe, but a lot of times it is. And then 
Um, I think there's a lot of parents, their generation, that just um, really have the, has this belief, have this belief that uh, a, a child just has to listen to you. And if they don't, that's their problem. That's the child's problem and not the parent's problem. So using emotions to manipulate you can also be so scary and confusing for a kid. And it can make it really hard to, to relax around a parent because um, your belief is that whenever any emotion comes up, I'm unsafe. So emotions will come up because that's just what emotions do. They, you cannot control them. They just come up and in a natural state, like you can suppress them, but that's not really a natural state, nor is it very healthy. So as a child, you're like, I, I'm not allowed to be angry, sad, or have any emotions come up, which means you can't really relax around your parent or caregiver that you want a connection with, which makes it really hard to relax into that connection, which might lead to a fearful avoidant attachment style. Another one is wanting closeness, but being afraid of that feeling of connection and lashing out when it happens. And this was, this is a really key one because you might not even really uh, recognize all the other ones, but when your parent is scared of feeling a connection, that will definitely has its effect on how you uh, are with with connection with intimacy with closeness in a relationship which is really the core of uh, a fearful avoidant attachment style that you're afraid of that closeness so if a parent is in his childhood has has had this too whenever um he or she you, the parent or caregiver came close to their parents, um, they would kind of not want the connection because that felt scary. Because connection can be, can be overwhelming. It takes a lot of vulnerability. It takes allowing all your feelings to be there and allowing all your emotions to be there. Um, so it's actually quite scary for a lot of people. And I think different people react in different ways. But when your parent has a tendency to, to kind of get angry. Um, and it doesn't even have to be like full blown real rage, just angry. Uh, then that could happen in a moment that you're seeking connection. So as a small child, like I said, connection is so important. It's like, it's almost as important or maybe even as important as a physical need, um, like food and, and, and water. So you're seeking that emotional closeness you maybe go to your parent or caregiver and you are being tender and gentle and um and relaxing in that connection that causes a feeling you can feel the moment a connection happens and when that feeling is scary to your parent they can have this um jolt this fear reaction that can cause them to get angry if that's their preferred emotion or if that's their default emotion when they get scared in a way. So what would what can happen is um, they will they will physically push you away or they will be really annoyed with you or they will criticize you or they will reject you or they will start talking about something that you did wrong or um, they will um, say that you're coming too close and that you should back off or it it can happen at in all different kinds of ways, but what you get as a child is, oh, connection is not safe because of the reaction of your parent, but also because of what you feel in the moment that you felt connected and then something happened. Then actually it was kind of dangerous for, for you as a child. And then the last one is love bombing. So that means hot and cold parents. Um, and a lot of times that means that they were very focused on performance and cheering you on and um, celebrating whatever you did, but you can never really find consistency in, uh, in winning because it's kind of up to the mood of the parent. So this is why it's also confusing and why it can happen in um, 
why you, why you can definitely have a really good relationship with your parents. Maybe they were there for you. They were cheering you on. They were very interested in what you did. They wanted to see you win. But that can also kind of lead to it, it having to be a performance. And it can also be a performance in like being perfect for them with your emotions and with um, you being exactly the way they want to be. They want you to be. And um, parents can be hot and cold in this, in this too. So sometimes they're like super intense into what you're doing and cheering you on. And sometimes they're not or they're annoyed that you don't give it your all or don't do any better. And that inconsistency is, is what is hard, but it's also the love bombing that makes it hard. So the, the intense moments of um, connection in, in another way, but only when that parent feels up to it. So it doesn't always have to be that every moment of connection was, um, was scary for the parent or for you. It can be that some moments were actually really intense and really beautiful and, and very connected, but it was only when the parent was able to. And when it wasn't, when he or she wasn't able to, um, they kind of lashed out. So it was actually scary. They weren't able to say, who oh, wait, this is kind of overwhelming for me. I love you, but um, can we... Can we try this again in like five minutes? I really do want to hug you. I really do want to be close to you. But I just, I just feel like I have to deal with my emotions right now. Um, they cannot say that. They cannot even feel it. Like they, they probably won't even notice that their annoyance that they feel is really not about you as a child. It's really about them not being able to deal with their emotions. All right. I hope this is clear. This is quite a lot, but it definitely um, can be generational trauma that is not severely, like severe abuse. So that's what you read a lot uh, about the fearful avoidant attachment style, that it's severe abuse that causes this attachment style, but it can be generational trauma and the way a parent or caregiver um, handles that moment of connection. So the main cause is that the parent or caregiver that was meant to soothe you was also a source of fear for you in whatever way. So if you, I really hope this was eye-opening to you. I really hope you've, you understand yourself better. You understand where things come from better. If that's so, please let me know in the comments below. Just um, tell me which ones of these were new or an eye-opener and please also share if you have your own wisdom around that i i really do always want to hear that so if you want to know how to heal this you can watch this video and if you want to know more of the signs of the fearful avoidant you can watch this video i'm so happy you're here know that you are amazing and that you are worthy of love exactly as you are right now